if you think like you're like, um, you know, I'm I'm an entry level, like I'll probably make 50 a year. You're going to make 50 a year. Oh, if yeah, you literally mindset. think you're worth 100 and you know that's what you're going to make next year and you, you know, write it out, you budget, you figure out how you're going to make 100K. You have more than one stream of income. You think you're worth that 100K. Like, I, I do think there is a little bit of manifestation there. I this is the most the truest thing you've probably ever said. I'm dead serious. Oh, yeah, I love you that. write down goals. Mm-hmm. Your goals will come true. Yeah. You don't write down your goals. You already lost. Like, I think it's like 82% of like the likelihood of it mm-hmm. happening. If you write down your goals, you're literally 80 something percent closer to actually getting your goals to come true. I wrote down, I think 15 goals last year around this time and all 15 of them I've done. Love that. Yay. Welcome back to Straight Candid Podcast with Sid and Soph, where we take pride in normalizing taboo conversations, saying the wrong thing, drinking too much caffeine, and talking too fast. Here at Straight Candid, we live unfiltered. No edits, deletes, or drag and drops. Just two Minneapolis girls who hit record and keep it candid. Let's Let's get get into it. it. I hate when socks look really gross, but you know they're clean. I know. I swear. I'm like, I'm not crusty. I'm not Krusty Krab Pizza. I'm not Krusty. Krusty Krab Pizza is the pizza for you and me. Krusty Krab. Every time I do around the world curls in class, Wait. I want to. I want to go take it around down. down. But I, I say it I almost every that. time. Did you think of that? Yes, because I was going like this. You're like around. Yeah. And I was like, I try. I can't. Keep, I can't Hold keep on. saying that every class. Why? Because there's different people in every class. Well, sometimes, but I just like get sick of it myself. But I, I think in my head, I'm like around, around down. And I go, who knows where that's from? And someone's always like SpongeBob. SpongeBob. Obviously, duh. Okay. I wish I had chapstick though. I do too. Here, wait. And then we're ready to rumble. <laughs> Three, two, one, zero. Yeah, it's Who's just, ready? It's took us a while to get going. Yeah, wow. Well, sorry, everybody. Thanks for holding on. Every time she puts on her chapstick, I'm actually wowed. Every single time you put on your chapstick, my mo- my mouth drops wide open. Because you literally... <laughs> I'm like, okay. I, I'm not going to lie. Mind you, I did put it on really aggressive. This is what... I'm going to redo it. <laughs> I'm like, holy shit, you just went in the I'm zone. Crying, I'm crying, I'm <laughs> crying. Remember when I stole your chapstick? Um, <laughs> you guys, tell them. I have something to start this day off of. I'm thankful for her, but I will say I'm <laughs> thankful for separate chapsticks because now I'm realizing you might have already, dang it. Yeah. Okay, I well, I just, okay, okay. I just used Sophie's chapstick because my lips are a little chapped. Well, uh, last time I let Sophie borrow my chapstick, this I is look so over. embarrassing, you guys. Not only does Can she. Can I preface it quick? Because it's really embarrassing. Um, I was like probably tipsy. Didn't really know whose chapstick. Like at the time, I just thought about the chapstick on my face. Like I didn't really. I didn't, didn't associate. Chapstick. I didn't associate it with Sid's chapstick. I thought it was mine. Okay. okay continue. Continue. Off. We, um, and she, you know, does her lather around the lips like 45 times really fast, really fast. Got to do it fast. And then she just goes boop, boop right into her nostril right one all the way around the world <laughs> left one all the way around the world and i'm looking at her and i go oh my god you did not just do that and she's like what oh, oh fuck and she's like oh shit i'm sorry i'm like okay, yeah don't your nostrils get a little chapped though? i don't care i'll <laughs> get know. a vaseline I'm so i'll sorry. get a q-tip i'll go <laughs> I'm i don't so use sorry. other people's chapstick anyway no, andrew it, and i held that against you for a, yeah, a good while i can't believe i just gave you permission to tell it for the second time on the podcast welcome back everybody i still apologize i'm still very <laughs> very sorry about she that she rubs her chapstick in my but my chapstick in her nose i'm like dude it is about the way i put it on you're right it's a little aggressive but now you have, I have to, it everywhere from mimicking you you have to apply the pressure i mean but you really go for speed like <laughs> i've never seen something like that in my life i'm dead serious you literally i'm here i'm gonna pretend and I your think, eyes go dude, like into a zone like this i think we got it on camera <gasps> oh so we might have to clip that shit out we're keeping that i hope we can put it right <sighs> here somebody look at that somebody go to youtube and just see what she just did because it, it's intense let me tell you all right well my straight can moments besides the way i put on chapstick also look at my nails <laughs> Oh, Yo. oh yeah. she went you went to nibble town mm-hmm. didn't you yep don't so, do that reminder that our straight kind of moments there's something that makes us more human a little yeah. embarrassing like my ugly ass nails the way i put on chapstick listen they um, just make us a little more human yeah. like the fact that i i've been tooting the entire time we've been moved into this new home so like a total of maybe four days so it is it is 
it is now just embracing Sid, Sid's aura. I've maybe tooted in every room and I thought I was being really discreet because my stomach gets uncomfortable when you're like, you know, you're moving a lot of change, whatever. And I've had a lot of dairy. I won't lie. And I've like, I toot and like, I'm sitting on the couch and I do like a cute little toot and I forgot it went out and whatever. And, <laughs> and then later I, I did another one, like, and it's my like seventh one right by Jordan. You gotta mark your fucking territory. And I look at him and he goes, do you think I don't hear those? <laughs> and I was like, wait, what? And he goes, do you think I don't hear those? And I'm like, and he just turns over and like goes to bed and i was like oh no nothing no follow-up that was all he said no and i was already oh, we were already like kind of half hurtful. asleep because it was i was accidentally like you know when you toot and you're almost asleep and then you're like oh i just let out a toot whoops like and then you like slowly look over with one eye open because you're like did they just hear that they didn't they didn't hear that and it wakes you up because yes. you're like you're all of a sudden you just relax your butthole and you're like <laughs> was a toot. and then it wakes you up because you're like crap i just farted yes that's anyway, funny. it's so lovely. I'll be having honest, a roommate though, that you yeah. share a bed with. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say, by the time you're sharing a bed, though, like you gotta be comfortable farting. Well, yeah, sorry, I, mean, I but I wouldn't rip one on them or anything yeah, like you that. Would, you would now you would does he? Yeah, you would politely spread the cheeks like we talked yes. about and, and let it safety. out silent for and safety. There's a big gap under the door, so I can't get away with shit here. It's like <laughs> God, Lord. Anyway, oh, too good. I too moved. Good. Yeah, we're in a different studio. If you can tell, our straight handed neon sign is not up yet, but it will, it will be. be. Up. Give it like a day. Next episode, it'll be up. So don't Yay. worry about that. We tell us about it. Why were we moved? Like this is be- this I is a beautiful know. home, by the way. It Thank is you. gorgeous. Thank you. I'll give you like the in detail tour. We didn't even go downstairs. Oh yeah. Um, Jordan had purchased a home and had invited me to come along with him, and and I would have said fuck yeah now that I'm in this. Yeah. Place. So. It's it's beautiful. It's a beautiful space. I'm not telling you where, but it's somewhere towards Minnetonka. I'll tell you that. Um, but I'm outside the city, so it's kind of like a weird feeling because you're I'm I'm you know like a good 15 20 minutes away from the city. Uh, it was exactly 29 minutes. No, to be exact. What? Yep. I, Without whenever traffic. I drive to Berries, I it only takes me exactly 20. Mine was 28 minutes. Why I wonder. But you know what? It was a good drive. I got a list of podcasts. I got to prep for this. Driving She's is like crazy. the most calm part of my day. So yeah. I ain't ba- I ain't mad about I it. I won't lie. I drive a lot faster than you. So like I, it took me twenty minutes to get to Barry's today. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's, She's like, oh, oh, jeez, you scary cat. No. So I moved, and it's it's honestly, I'm embracing it now. Mm-hmm. But I, at first, it was not what I really expected. Cause I, I had a quote unquote plan for your life yeah. and way to not listen to yourself. Like every time you have a plan for your life and you do something different, you're going to be no matter what you're going to be disappointed. Right. But what's funny though, yeah. is this is part of your plan. Like this is like your dream. Like this is amazing, but it's like, it's just out of it's, order. It's out bit. of order. It's not your timeline. So yeah. sometimes you just got to embrace it. And like just with jobs, just with like little things like this, not little things, but, but it's going to it's going to work its way it out. Will. And I think your timeline might change. It might like it might it flop around. It might look a little different. Like my California story mm-hmm. might be a little, little different than what I thought it would be. It's not mm-hmm. going to be tomorrow. It's going to yeah. be in six months or who freaking knows. But anyway, I'm here. I love it. It's beautiful. I love the cats. They're roaming around being annoying. Our Scotty's. Timelines, mm-hmm. Our timelines are a little different. Mm-hmm. Um, you're in a house, the boyfriend. <laughs> I don't. I had a mid- little eyebrow. You're like, Rah. I had a midlife crisis yesterday. Got my nipple pierced. I can't believe thought, that you went and just did that. You know, yeah, I was with my guy friend. We lifted at the gym and I go make a pit. I go make a pit stop on the way home. He's like, what? Why? I go pull over. (laughs) I can't believe you. He's like, we hop out. We hop out. We both get our tits pierced. Walk out. There we go. Nothing like a lift and a nipple piercing. Am I right? Yeah, oh, my nothing. God. Who can relate? Raise your hand. Yeah, that's me, baby. God, what? <laughs> what? Uh, oh, yeah. my I'm God. A, that's, I'm, that's actually it's insane and it's really fun. So yeah. um, we're going I'm, not, through, I'm not knocking it at yeah, all, yeah. by the way. We're going through different midlife crisis. Yes. Yours is different than mine. And I'm like definitely struggling with like a little bit of identity stuff right now. Yeah. A little bit of like loneliness, a little bit of like, what the fuck am I doing? Who do I even want as a partner? Like, that's also what I've been realizing is like, I got to figure out who I'm even looking for because it's just so mindless and pointless right now to yeah. date date for me because I'm like, I don't even know what I want. Yeah. Well, I mean, but you, sometimes you can figure it out as you like yeah. start talking to people, but Gosh, I always sound so I, exhausting. It is exhausting. And I learned that. And I kept like, just kind of casually speaking to people. And it honestly, I was freaking tired yeah, and I didn't want to do it I anymore. Feel. And I did learn like the type of people that I was maybe more interested in, mm-hmm. but at the time they were at the time, not what I would go for now. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know. You learn from it, but 
yeah i don't know well we're, we're going through different things mm-hmm. but we're, we're just cruising along how was your cruising. thanksgiving by the way it was good um pretty good the family yeah i mean went to my grandma's yeah everyone was there it was really fun i just think it's a little funny because i'm definitely a little more unconventional you in don't terms of say you don't say so what? i i have to try to filter a little bit um which is difficult for me yeah like i can't even really swear in front of them yeah oh it's I, hard. I swear in front of my family exactly like i'm so used to swearing and it's been a while since i've been having to filter myself because of covid like i haven't been yeah, with true. that family for a long time so i oh, true yeah because last year yeah. we didn't have it obviously so i haven't had to put a filter on for a while and i remember whipping out a few f words on accident and like Uh-oh. quick covering my mouth and my dad giving me the eye Wait, yeah really yeah do you I feel like a little f- kid again yeah when and, you're over there like that and i think it's funny because you embrace you embrace the character that your family thinks you are yeah so like it goes Ooh. back to your it goes back to your childhood so like i was always the odd man out the middle child kind of the troublemaker yeah so like when i was there with my family i kind of felt like that again like yeah i'm the one getting picked on i'm the one obviously it was nice to see everyone but like at the same time i was like this kind of sucks like i'm still the one that everyone thinks is young immature i don't have a conventional job like i'm not worth no one's asking me questions about my yeah. career everyone like oh like Garrett's in nursing I was how conventional what are you doing like I'm like (laughs) yeah by the way like I post on TikTok and get paid sometimes like anyone wondering about that no no I know okay I know but but a little rant no that's okay it's good to have those rants but we're not always gonna fit in with our family and that's I mean my opinion is if you see your family and you love them to death and you think they're amazing and all those things but you don't want to repeat the patterns that they've made then you're gonna look different exactly them. that's my opinion on that and i don't i'll be honest like i yeah no, i want that's, a different that's good. different life than you that can, that's who you want to be yeah. and you're gonna be that and that's a good thing what about you but don't let them um tame your yeah, light i know i texted that right <laughs> yeah tame your light i was feeling so upset and i texted you were literally Sid in the middle shoving of my your thing. finger in my hand i'm like <laughs> In the middle of my Thanksgiving, I'm like, Sid, this, I know. this is my family drama. <laughs> I know. And I was like, I got you. I yeah, get it. I appreciate Trust you. Trust me. Hey, I my family is a lot more like a little more out there yeah we still have the very conservative side but like but you know my aunts are witches and like you know yes. that, that whole thing so that part is fun but they think that i live like a wild lifestyle like <laughs> i'm like really out there like i, I was living in minneapolis City life yeah my, my parents can't or my my extended family cannot wrap their head around the fact that i live yep. in like a city yep <laughs> yep yep and they're like whoa don't you feel a little unsafe you better lock your doors and oh, everything yeah. i'm like I do. Why do I? I don't think about it. Do you walk to your car by yourself? <laughs> um, yes, probably. I mean, if it's not far away, am I, I being smart? Yeah. Do I have a pepper spray in my car? Hunter P. My dad got me a taser. Wait, what? Yeah. Wait, for legit tases you? No, this was like a couple years ago for Christmas. I'll show oh, you. Oh wait, I it would. It would. No, you do not want to no, try. I it. Try it not in the air, oh. not on me. What do you think? I'm gonna let you tase me? I would. I, Sid can't be with us this episode. <laughs> I accidentally I hit her. I accidentally taste her. And then you learn what you can do and then you do it forever. You're like, another solo pod. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Let's talk about <laughs> orgasms. <laughs> I'm so excited for Sarah to come back, by the way. That's next week, people right? Are, yeah. People are freaking hyped and I am too. I'm like, yes. So Sarah is the OBGYN that we had yes. a couple episodes ago and it I actually just reached 10,000 downloads. I it's just saw. Our, I think it's our it's first. Our top. It's our top. It yeah. goes her and then it goes Hello Teffy. Mm-hmm. And then there's one in between. Between, I'm blanking on what it is. We'll figure it out. We'll but. figure it out. But there, I mean, I I'm so excited. It's gonna be amazing. Okay. Can okay. Can I try to do some stray candy moments? Do yes. you have any? I kind of shared the nipple piercing and how was um, that? Not the nails. stray candy moment. I, it's been two weeks. I have so many, but okay, I'll, I'll like wrap some. it around. Um. So give I, it to me. I thought it was funny. I'll go in order. So my mom calls me a week ago, or yeah, this is like about a week ago. She goes about a week so, ago. Um, <sighs> I think I hopped on your podcast live at the wrong time. I go, oh God. Why? She goes, so Jesus. She goes, so you're bisexual and you did shrooms. (laughs) Are you kidding? No, she did not. The first word she said to me, I'm like, mom, you literally hopped on at the worst time. I go, that's why I go, mom. I go, mom, that's why you need to listen to the full thing. I said that I wouldn't do shrooms again. I said it was oh a god. weird feeling. Oh my god, I'm having. A- <laughs> and then I said, I said, I know I'm don't know if I'm bisexual. I said I was curious if you listened. Yes. And she goes, okay, well, just call in to check in. 
<laughs> that's all she said yeah she goes so i heard you're and like the way she worded it, i laughed so and hard. your mom is like so yeah so i heard you're bisexual and the trim like yeah. or something like that you know what she, i mean she, she kind of does kind of being funny yeah, about like, it yeah. but yeah oh your mom your just, poor mom she probably fainted so, yeah she was so funny and yeah. she was watching the the, the live or whatever luckily Insta-Live. she still loves me oh your me. sweet little mama jamma oh <laughs> Lord um, have mercy. My second okay, candy yeah, moment second was. One? I love this shit. So on Saturday, the last go for game day, I pretended that I uh, knew what was going on at the U of M. Like I wanted to join oh, the band. <laughs> I wanted to join the bandwagon. I put on my the only bandwagon. my only yellow goldie shirt that I had. Um, through like this black shirt on top. I was like, I look kind of cute. Like, this will be fun. Like, I'll try to go to the cool bars that the cool U of M students go to okay. because I'm cool. I'm part of the U. So I'm part of the U. I heard, you know, we're supposed <laughs> to go to, I hear, I hear we're supposed to go to college club. Like that's the, the cool, KK. That's yeah. the cool place. Right. Yeah. But you have to call it the KK. So it's spell of K's. That's why. Yeah. Um, didn't know that. Right. So I type in um, college club with, oh, Jesus. C- with with C's in my GPS. I'm like, mm, I'm such a cool U of M student. I'm going to meet some cool U students. I'm going to join a sorority today. I drive. I'm driving my ass to college oh, club. I'm like, mm, I kind of feel like I'm in uptown. <laughs> You are kidding me. Next thing you know, I see co- I see I see College Club. I'm like, oh, I've been here before. Me and Sid went here after oh, a yeah, podcast with Chris. Oh, the hole in the wall. Oh my God. That place has been there for like a hundred years. And I look inside and like, <laughs> I don't see anything. I don't happening. think you're gonna see any U of M students there. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not the freaking sorority people. I'll tell you that. If you're not from Minneapolis, you're like, what is happening? Let's just say I drove to the wrong part of town and I did not end up at the college club. No, the the the, the KK. I ended up in like this little hole in the wall. Drove oh my, my ass, God, you're drove kidding. my ass all the way back to where I came from. No, and saw the actual college club, and there's no way I was getting in because the line was five miles long. I was gonna say, long. how would you get in? I d- I I was gonna I was planning to see people I knew in line, yeah. which I did, which you did, I'm sure. Um, but I was like, I don't feel like this. And then I drove to my parents and decorated the Christmas tree instead. So I'm like, oh, wait, cute though, yeah, very was, wholesome. Yeah, and your mom probably was like, okay, she's <laughs> yeah. back on my next yeah. list. Yeah, exactly. Santa's gonna get you no a present this year. No more coal. <laughs> Yay. Um, but you <laughs> oh, were Lordy. at the parties on Saturday. I was uh, there. Physically, <laughs> not oh, mentally. I just think I had you, a lot of stress to release, and that's my excuse because I rode a party bus to Stub and Herb. You do not need to validate your drunkness because you never get drunk. I know I never get drunk. So let it out, honey. And I wanted to. I like you know when you want to, you're like, yeah. Like I'm not purposely like getting drunk, but I want to. I want to let loose. I want to be yeah. with my friends. I want to run around. Babe, that is fine. And it was oh, it was a good time. But I will tell you, I had a few people come up and say like, oh my god, it's drinking it. At the U of M, I bet it's popping. Oh, listeners, yeah. Oh, it was popping. Like it couldn't stop. But I will tell you one thing. There's like three funny things about this. Okay, so these two girls, I was like, oh, I have to remember their name. I have to remember their name. They were so, so I can nice. Shout them out. So I can shout them out on the podcast. So I, I apparently, and I found this later. Go in my notes, and instead I wrote, of adding like their Instagrams, like no. a normal person, like, hey, what's your Insta? Let me add your username because my hands were so cold. And my brain was so drunky. I wrote down Piper and Greta in her notes. In my notes, no last name, no idea what the Piper last name is. Piper and Greta, we fucking love we you. We love you. You were I, you were adorable. I'm sorry if I was slurring my words, and if I'm sorry if my eyes were a little bloodshot. It's not from anything else besides a booze. But I was a little drunky. And then while I'm trying to type their names because it was taking me so long, someone bumped me. I dropped my phone. <gasps> oh, shattered shit. the back of my phone. That yeah, looks really shattered bad. Shattered the back of my phone. And then I finally found a friend again. I was by Emma for a little while, and then I w- I found my other friends, and we're waiting in line to use the porta potty and let me tell you wait when you have to pee on game day were like you at st- you're at you're outside they have oh. outside porta potties because their bathrooms are so packed yeah like i almost whiz my pants and i'm waiting in line and this little honey bunches of oats cuts right in front That's of a me nice way to say bitch literally cuts right in front of me and just like looks back at me and then looks forward again and I look at her and my friend, my friend, I won't say her name. I almost said her name. She's a lot more like she's timid, not timid, but like, you know, quiet and kind. And she was like, I really have to piece it. And I, I can't, I can't wait any longer. And I literally look, I tap the girl on the shoulder. I go, hi. Yeah. You just budged the line and that's not going to fly. I'm sorry. We've been waiting for 25 minutes and it probably came out like line, like that. But she, she literally looks at me. She goes, and who are you? And I go, 
oh my God. I go, ay, 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 you have attitude for days. And she goes, I love she goes, that. ay, ay, ay. <laughs> And mimics me. And I literally look at her. I go, oh, my God, you are actually classless and so immature. And she goes, oh, my God. La, la. And she mimics me again. And I was like, holy crap. I actually had to turn around because I was like, I might sucker punch this girl. And I'm not physical. Do you remember this TikTok wait, I sent wait. you? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Wait, it goes wait. when the alcohol oh, starts tasting like, like did that, did that hole just push me? <laughs> And it reminded me like of Sid. That's just because it's so relatable. Wait, wait, wait until she turns. Up and down. <laughs> Looks her up and down. Oh, I forgot about that. That you sent that to me. So that story makes me think of that. I had to send you that TikTok because Sid will not take shit when you're no, drunk. I'm not going to take it. And she just walked into the bathroom and I go, I waved at her bye. And she like, did she budge so you still? Mad. Yeah, because like, what am I going to do? Pull her out of the stall? Like and she, oh. her friends were behind me she, and her friends like were waiting and she goes and closes the stall door and they go, don't mess with her. She gets really fiery and she's kind of scary. And I go, I'm not really scared of your friend. I'm not. I'm not scared of her. Actually, I'm like, <laughs> You're she's rude. I love this. I'm like, love you're this. rude. And she said some other stuff to me, but she's yeah. being so rude. And I was not being rude at all. I, I just, just said, don't budge. You can go right behind me, but I'm about to pee my pants. One of my biggest pet peeves is when, yi yi. when girls judge other girls. <laughs> yi yi. Yeah. And then she. I'm Sorry. Like, I just had to say it again. <laughs> my biggest pet. I was like, is when girls judge, judge other girls right away and like come out of this like evilness versus like why not start with kindness first? I'm it like, just if you just it, came up to me, especially if I'm drinking and you're like, I'm about to pee my pants and I'm I'm in do you pain. mind? Can I go behind you? Can I cut in line with you? I'm yeah. sorry. Sure. Freaking sure. Drunk, you can go right behind me. Drunk girls are either like, oh my God, I love you. I want to be best friends. Can I suck your toe? Yeah. Or, or, your toe. or they're like, bitch, you oh. are the biggest C she, word I've ever. She looked at me with disgust. Just oh like, my God. you disgusting And person. you can't get it out of your head. And it bothers, oh, I was and so it bothers you to this day because you're well, a people pleaser. You know, when you're standing there, I've gotten so much better. I don't actually care about her, but I was more cry so when the, people flick me tood, off. The tood she gave me, like for no reason. And then I got tood from this other person, said hi to somebody I know. I haven't seen her in many, many years. And her friend was looking at me like this. Imagine like looking that way and seeing this when you turned. <laughs> And I, the, looked, I looked at her and the I go, eye up and down. Hi, what's your name? And she says, my name. Oh, and she says her name. And I go, and she just goes <laughs> like making this like kind of smirky, snotty. snotty face. And I go, oh my God, not very nice to meet you. And I walked away. I was just like, you know what? I'm not having it. I'm like, I'm having a good time today. And you guys Maybe are Maybe that's why tood. I stay away from the college bars. Something was in the air. Mm -hmm. Something was in the air, my friends. But the Gophers won. So that's right. Hey. We got the axe back. So there you, you go. You know what else is in the air? What? It was such a good transition what? that we might have to switch up the order. What? What? The air is full of, it's like cuffing season. Oh, what's that I see? Uh -oh. Do I see handcuffs? Hand Do I see handcuffs? Hand Is that a little smoke? A little cuff me, baby. <laughs> Put my cuffs on. <laughs> Toss me in the back seat. Oh, uh, yeah. Come I'm under arrest. Do you want to start with coffee season? Yeah, let's go. It, let's roll. So this episode, we're going to talk about coffee season, obviously, because it's that time of year it's again. It's that time of year. We're we also gonna, it's here. We're also going to jump into a little self-sabotage talk and then also about um, relationships. Yes. Right? Yes. A little quirky. bit of like quirkiness in relationships and then right into a little uh, streak in a moment that we like. Love it. Okay. That's the rundown, y'all. Let's do it. Okay. Cuffing, cuffing season. Cuffing season. It's here. So when it starts to get a little cold out, you know. We'll just define, I guess, what coughing season means to it us. Sounded like an ad right there. Right. Uh, it sounded like a manscaped yeah, ad. Yeah, it did. Um, so coughing season, I guess, is when you like hunker down with someone or whoever you're seeing at the time, even if it's someone you're not really looking to be with for like a long term, but you're like, oh, hey, yeah. you're here. It's cold. Let's cuddle. Let's hibernate together. It's usually when you get closer to the holidays, yeah, you kind of almost, it's almost like something's in the air and you, because it gets darker earlier, mm -hmm. you get cozier with that person. The fling or relationship progresses a lot sooner. And then all of a sudden you guys are like, without having a conversation about it together without even talking yep. about it for the rest of the foreseeable winter. Yeah. It's, and it's interesting. And it's like, like you said, it's, it's cause, Oh, oh sorry. 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 There's a cat. I'm here. sorry. Mixing. No. Um, there we go. Cause you don't really want, it's, it's harder to meet people in the winter. Like think of the summer months, like let's go hoe out in our bikinis and like have fun. Go on the boat. Yeah. Go to the bar. If you have a relationship start in the summer, you know, it's, you know, it's real. Yeah. But if it starts in the winter, like just keep your eyes open, keep your, keep your walls up a little bit because 
you know what I'm saying? Like, you don't know if it's going to end come January. Come is it February. convenience? Is it convenience? Or is it true love? Or is it mm-hmm. true like or whatever the heck it is? I have don't know. Have you ever coughed? Like, have you coughed someone in the, in, during this time before? I've never coughed someone the, during this time, but I've been coughed. And this is how I knew. I was like, holy cringe. You know when you get the cringe? Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Or what is it? The, the ick. ick. Okay. So it, this person. <clears throat> whoa. I had gone on a few dates with him in the past and it became convenient to like, you know, go on dates with them and whatever. And then I realized he was like, do you want to come to the bas- this basketball game with me? Like at the U and I was like, oh yeah, sure. And he's like, my family's going to come. And I was like, oh, <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Whatever, whatever. Yeah. So we go, I'm like, what? I'll get some like, you know, popcorn and hot dog. Who cares? So we go to the game and I literally get there and he's like, you guys, hi, this is Sydney, the girl I'm seeing. And I was just like, it was just so the girl I'm seeing. No, and I met his sister and his sister's wife and his uncle and his mom and dad and his oh two my brothers God. and their brother's kid. And I was like, oh my God. And we're talking about, they're like, so how do you, how do you know X, you know? Like, and I'm like, I do, I can't do this. I am, I'm like, I'm so cringed out. We're not dating. I don't even know this guy really. I don't like him at all. And I was just like, he's trying to cuff me right now. Like he brought me around his family, you know, then it's Thanksgiving, like in two weeks, like I've already met the family. So super normal if I show up and I'm like, oh my God. And I just, I, I remember I left the game and I was like, I texted really politely. I'm like, your family seems so nice. I'm just not ready for this goodbye and then i uncuffed my handcuffs and i was out well that's the thing cuffing can even mean like they start a relationship with you that's what he was trying to do yeah and i'm like whoa whoa whoa, whoa. yeah no and it was not we were not there yet we were not even like Mm -hmm. no 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 yeah so that's my cuffing story i feel like that's relatable because all of a sudden well because it's fun 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 and then all of a sudden you're like Whoa, she's you're going, whoa, buddy. No, you're crossing the line. But then again, it's like you're like, oh, it's also convenient for me. It was convenient at first because I was like, oh. it's gonna be cold out. We're not going out to the bars as much. It's too cold. I want to stay in. I want to cook. I want to have fun date nights. Like it, it's very natural to want to be with someone during this time no, of year. It, no, I and like the loneliness agree. starts to kick in. Like, for example, I decorated oh, my I decorated my parents. <laughs> I already was like, oh, I decorated my parents' Christmas tree. Yeah. And I was like in the mood to continue to decorate. I'm like, if I'm going to decorate my tree, I got to go do it now. Yeah. So get the ornaments um, out. I was about to leave and then I go, I have to go decorate my tree by myself. Like, isn't that sad? That kind of made me sad when you said it. You're like, I can just see you listening to holiday Christmas yeah. and holiday cheer. And just like bawling. <laughs> But then I told my family that I was like, this is so sad. And my sister goes, I'll come with you. So, oh, so then Grace came. She came. She oh, slept nice. over. We watched a really good fucking movie. Go watch Sound of Metal. So Sound of good. Metal. Sound of Metal. Sounds like a metallic band or whatever. It actually, is that a metallic band? Is that yeah, what they're called? Yeah, very close. Yes. It was metallic a lot band. along those lines. But anyways. Okay. Um, okay. She's like, yes, yes. Be quiet. I'm trying to think if I've ever... <laughs> Yeah, have you been cuffed or have you cuffed somebody? So now that I think about it. Oh God, what? Oh God, my I'm, I'm going to get water. Well, my last relationship, you all know who he is. I'm trying to think what time of month it was. Definitely around when it started to get cold out. Wait, no. I mean, it wasn't purposeful, but yeah. You were like, oh, let's. this is kind of convenient. Like, let's keep this rolling. Let's just give it a shot. Because like for me, I can't really give anyone a full fair chance unless I'm exclusively dating you because if I don't have a real if there's not a relationship label I'm probably still openly dating other people like that's I think that's fair though yeah I I do too I think that's fair so unless I think I think maybe the winter months is when I give people the the fair shot you know once you (laughs) yeah 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 (laughs) but it's true (laughs) your face you're like "Uh I'm like this is so bad that I'm saying this out loud but you know well I think you can like talk to other people or you can do whatever you want. I'm mm-hmm. just saying like, in my opinion, I've like, you know, talked to one person more seriously and then I'll still continue to like trickle these on. But yeah. I'm realizing that I'm really interested in this one that's going more yep. serious than me. So they just kind of like Dwindle. fall off and then maybe like kiss somebody at the bar. This is a bad example. Yeah. This is not like a serious example, but it's like, and then you're like, oh, I actually want this person. Yeah. You're like, I mean, oh, you gotta I'm going to stay out. with this person. So then or that's like, when it dwindles off. Exactly. Floats away. Or like, you know, I still have like a hinge profile, like swiping through that every yeah. now and then. I f- went on it for the first time actually a couple of days ago. Did you see anything? And yes, only because it was the What cool- do you mean? It, Where? Were you it, here? What? You were in Minneapolis. Yeah, Minneapolis. It was the coolest profile. It was two guys. Oh. And they're like, yo, we're best friends. They were both really cute. Like, we're best friends uh, looking for. Let me show you the profile. Because I, I got to re- see. If you're a dude listening, let me show you this because you're way more 
app opt to match with someone because if a girl gets to bring one of her single friends, oh, it's like I it's like, like not as in, yeah. it's not as intimidating because I've never gone on a date from Hinge until I might do this one. They're called. Oh, I was gonna say their names. Oh my god, I was like careful. <laughs> okay, so bleep. let me see. Wait. So it has this is my name. This oh, is fun. his name. And I bet you can't find another friend to go out for a fun double date adventure. Look, we all survived the weirdest year just looking to vibe with people and share laughs. Oh, cute. Oh, my God. What a cute profile. Right. And they're like, I'm pretty together. sure I've seen slash met one of those. Really? One so of then them. This is how I slid. And I said, wait, this is amazing. I'm phoning a friend. Indeed it is. Ring, phone, ring. Phone the friend. I said, ring, ring, bitches. And so I texted my single oh girlfriend. So we're going to maybe meet up. For- he goes, let's go to a chic rooftop. <laughs> oh, I love that. God. They go, uh, they said. Jordan always makes fun of me because I go, we want to go, want to go get fun drinks. He's like, what does that even mean? I'm like, <laughs> chic rooftop. She, they get it. <laughs> Let's go to a chic rooftop and get some cheap fine wine, laugh at each other, and end the night with dollar menu Mickey D's. Oh my God. I said, sounds like a dream. It sounds perfect. <laughs> Are they out of college? Um, Sid, I'm why, sorry. Why I'm just making sure. I'm just making sure. Oh, shit. I didn't even, I didn't even look at their age, their height. <laughs> I should have done that. Okay. Was six. Well, six one. 26. Which, which oh, one? We're fine. Which we're one? Fine. Which one? Six one. Well, they're going to take the highest height. So you oh, can guess. Shit, you're right. Vaccinated. We love that. Love to see it. I get my booster in a week. Oh, that's yeah. exciting. I was excited. Yeah. Okay, back to anyway, cupping okay, season. Sorry. I'm going to do a quick month by month because I th- thought this was funny. I heard okay. this on the way here. Okay, I want to hear. August scouting season. So they're, oh. they're really in this like a team building. You're building your team, guys. Okay. Oh, look it out. Like, get your August, eyeballs open. Scouting. September, drafting. October tryouts, Ooh. right? October is it's getting a little cold. <laughs> You're trying out. You're kissing those boys at the bar. You're having a trial. <laughs> November preseason, okay. And then December first, guys, we're getting there. December first to January fifteenth, cuffing season. Cuffing I love season. how you literally have like January or December one through Jan fifteen, <laughs> cuffing season. It looks <laughs> January fifteenth through February thirteenth. We got the playoffs. Oh, right. Valentine's Day is the championship. The championship. You, then you know if you don't last there, then take those cuffs off, baby. Unpopular opinion. I don't like Valentine's Day. I hate or maybe it. that is a popular opinion. Mm. Maybe it is a popular opinion. I don't like I think, it, even if I'm in a relationship. I think it's weird. I think I don't it's because there's a lot of pressure associated with it. Yeah. When you're in a relationship, you hate it when you're single because you're like, "Fuck, I'm lonely." You yeah. hate it when you're in a relationship because you're like, "Oh my god, what do I got to well, do?" I don't want to get person a chocolate heart. I'd be like, "Oh, thanks, God, I hate okay. all these. I'll try forty of them, and I like one." Okay, we're gonna see if Jordan listens to this ever. Don't tell him this is podcast. Won't. What would be your ideal Valentine's Day? Ooh. I would just like, what literally. What would you want? Oh, honestly, and this sounds like a Valentine's Day thing. Now that I'm thinking about it, see, you well, the do dream. A little, you like no, it. you like no, it. Yeah, you do. If it goes my way, <laughs> just kidding. Okay, dream number one would be. This is so elaborate, but like going on an overnight stay somewhere, she literally like a has quick it. trip to like Chicago. <laughs> okay, yeah. for a night. That sounds the other like one, you. Yeah, I the like other that. one I would love if you just told me get dressed up, and I was like, okay. And then you don't tell me anything else and we go out to dinner and, and you get your nipple pierced. And I get, yeah. And we go left and get our nipples <laughs> pierced. So yeah, that's bound. Wait, yeah. no, but I that like sounds that. sounds fun, right? Yeah. And then you come home and maybe there's like something fun, like mm-hmm. a candle lit or something. Yeah. Okay. Jordan. Check, check. Jordan. Jordan. Jordan you there? You tuning you in, there? buddy? Listen up. Yep. Listen up, sucker. Oh, I had ideas. So if you're in cuffing season and you're, but okay, well, if you're how in, to survive. in cuffing season, but how to survive in a relationship, how to survive, how to thrive, how to thrive, how to make it better. Here's the thing I have to flag when you're in a relationship, you know, it starts to get cold outside. Pick a fun show to have as like your Sunday night thing. That's what yeah. Jordan and I do. And we love what that you ever watching? since we've done it. I'm Yellowstone. Okay. I I've heard love. it. I heard we got to do it. I won't lie. First episode, you'll be like, ah, and then w- just keep watching. It's so good. And then the other one is, you're not going to believe this one. What were you going to say? Finish first. Big Mouth. Oh, on yeah. Netflix. I've heard good things about that. It's so inappropriate, but it's just is that so cartoon? funny. Yeah. Oh, but see, it's, I don't, I cannot no, I'm get not into a, I'm not a cartooner. Yeah. I'm not a cartooner. <laughs> I'm not kidding. So <laughs> I'm not, no, I'm not, I'm not a cartooner. I, I never swear. watched like the only cartoon I like, watched Simpsons, was like SpongeBob. I cannot. I never have. You would like this one. It's well, <laughs> she just dropped your laptop. That was like so slow motion. <laughs> I hope we can play back the flailing of the arms that you just had. <laughs> okay, we're literally flailing. That is the reason why. My God. That's the reason why I would a want a coughing season. Um, 
little um, partner is because of the good ass shows that you can watch with someone because when it's you watch fun. them by yourself, you kind of feel guilty. guilty. I'm like, I'm wasting my you're time. Like, you're laughing. You're like, <laughs> my mom's you're calling. Alone in bed. Should we answer? Yeah. Say hi to your mom. Hey, mom. Sophie. Oh, <laughs> oh God. I think she's mad. I probably should hang up. Are you mad at me? No. Oh, you just said mom. And so I said, oh, oh my God, I had a I got, my stomach. I got really scared for a second, mom. <laughs> no, because all I heard you when you picked up, you said, mom. So oh, I just God. said, Sophie. <laughs> I thought you were going to say you listened to my uh, podcast live again. And you didn't like that. I mentioned the fact that you got called out, that I got called out for my last uh, Instagram live on the podcast. But what's up? Oh, well, maybe I should. I don't know what you're talking about. No, no. I was just looking on. Um, uh, what's it called? Um, oh, God. My, okay. You know, find your location just because I, you popped up with everybody else's. I want to see if Grace made it home yet. And I saw that you were close to me. You're in Excelsior. Yeah. Yes. Sid just moved. I moved. We're not going to give any more details, though, where we are, because we're live right now. Yeah, we got to go. We're actually live on the podcast, <laughs> but I, but we're neighbors. We're neighbors. We're neighbors. That's crazy. I know. Okay. Okay. Love you. Love you. Right, love you. Bye. 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 Oh, I love your Cute. mom. Okay. She's like, I just saw your little bubble pop up. I got up, but so I, scared. She, I thought she was going to call me up for like, I don't know. I don't I'm know. Not kidding. I'm always nervous. <laughs> Nothing scarier than your mom's. Yeah. Sydney. Name calling. And I'd be like, and I know when she says my full name, I'm like, oh, fuck, what did I do? She was, I got, okay, sorry. Scary. Continue. Scary. <laughs> but she's so cute. Okay. So if you're in a relationship and you're like, I'm bored, I don't know what to do with them, um, or with your person, guy, girl, whoever the heck it is that you're cuffing up to this season, um, go make a little list of things that sound fun. And I know it sounds stupid, but I think when you're sitting in the, you know, on a Saturday morning, you're like, what do we do today? You're never going to find anything that you want to do. And it's going to end up being a disappointing day because you just like kind of wasted the day away and you didn't enjoy it for being this lazy day. Yeah. So number one, go sledding, maybe go ice skating or do pick up hockey, maybe do a fireball day. I thought that was hilarious. Like pick a, like a, a friend and like, you know, like a, another couple maybe, and go have like a fireball day, go do something what is like, like fireball. Day? So fireball is like warm and it's winter. So I thought you could have like fireball games. So like you could throw a party Wait, like, and be so outside. Confused. Fireball, like throw a fireball, like take a fireball shot. Oh, like the you alcohol. Could, like, oh my god, you thought I went like fire and flames, I, like fire throwing. What's the cartoon with the guy like the fire and he throws? Oh the my fire. god, airbender. That's what I was thinking of. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, wouldn't that be fun to have? Like, you could have like sledding a, games a or something like that. Yeah, like, that. like that's what I'm saying. It'd be like Love. cozy. You could do Olympic drinking. Wow, I really have a theme going. Um, <laughs> Christmas cookie baking, cheese board, and wine night. Um, you could go for a drive with the lights, do the ice castles, Christmas movie night, take your dog to the snowy dog park. I love how I wrote down snowy. I wrote down a few like Lawless, Stillheart, O'Shaughnessy um, for distilleries in Minneapolis, and love. then go to Buck Hill and go snow tubing. I love this idea with I the notes in your phone my favorite way when i've been dating or it's when down. i've been cuffing someone cuffing. um we share the notes together oh, yeah that's so like almost do. like we do with our straight can of topics so when someone adds something you the other person will get a notification and it can be funny stuff like something you want to try funny. like buy handcuffs and like you can check it off the list you know what i mean we and have, it can be things to do things to go and share it with your other person and then you can um yeah you see when someone else adds something and kind of be fun back and forth it's thing. fun yeah it's, that's what we do we do it for like bucket list I travel ideas that. and then like date ideas and we like mark it off like look at this manny petty and jordan put a little check mark by it <laughs> did he go get a pedicure yes you? he did he loved it he got his cuticle clean, and I'm like, you don't oh, nibble on those nails, so honey cute. bunches of oats. Uh-uh, no nibbling on those nails. I love that. And the lady was like, he likes it. I was like, yeah, he does. And then I like rubbed his back like I was like his mom. It probably looks so creepy. He, like he pretends he doesn't, but he loves it. He loves this. it. Anyway, I just think that we need to take the pressure off of cuffing season, though, because yeah. 
when you're in a relationship, sometimes you wish you were having more alone time. Mm-hmm. When you were alone, you wish you were in a relationship. Like grass, the grass is, is always greener. greener. Not even when there's no grass outside. You get yeah. what I'm saying? Because it's cold out. The snow is always wetter. Yeah. On the other side. Sure. Sure. <laughs> Icier. Help her. Um, no, but it, all Please I'm saying her. is just take the pressure off. Like you're not, you don't need to be looking for anybody. And people are probably looking out there. But I think the best things happen when we just let them happen. And there's no pressure no matter your age to find something and like, also there's no pressure there is no pressure and if you want to look for someone and you want to maybe just hunker down with someone hibernate like to be honest i want to enjoy somebody i company. want a goddamn netflix partner okay yeah and that's fine. i think it's important to just tell them your intentions so if you want to enjoy cuffing season fucking enjoy it cuff them you can cuff each other go buy some handcuffs when you're at it have a great ass winter man and make some popcorn dang it because that sounds dang, dang good i'm freaking i've hungry. had it i've had it every night for the past Mm, yeah, six days. Mm, it sounded like a little whistle. <laughs> that was beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, switching topics it's a little, true. huh? Yes, this is a little bit of a different topic, but a, we had a lot of people talk about it and yeah. send things in and, and talk, want us to deal talk with about it. it. And perfect timing to talk about it because it kind of transitioned, and I'll say what the topic is, but it transitioned from both of us being like, I would say like worn out and distraught and maybe a little like depressed because like, we all go to th- through cycles like that in to drum roll self-sabotage and destructive behavior and that is in everything like it can be with food it can be with relationships it can be with career you yep. day-to-day <laughs> friendships like finances it can be finances yep everything so we did ask on our instagram we said we why did. do we self-destruct what do you think your most most, most, se- most <laughs> god damn it, really. let me start over what do you think your most self-destructive behaviors are and we had some really good answers and like Sid said yes they all revolved around relationships a lot of eating finances career personality um can i read like a few just a sure. handful that come off kinda, the top of my head maybe we'll go into one then go into a little more detail about it yeah maybe let's do that instead um it says binge eating this isn't talked about enough but it's so common i mean we just talked about that with denver yeah a few episodes to go when i first when we first decided we we're going to talk about self-sabotage for me immediately what came up was eating and binge eating yeah. um and i think everyone has something that they think of right away when you hear self-destruction and mm-hmm. self-sabotage what do you think of right away um negative words in my head yep i so can't like get out negative self-talk yes okay interesting. and it was interesting what you said mm-hmm. when you walked in about how we do the opposite of what our love language is. Yeah. So my love language, words of affirmation, obviously, I'm like a total wordsy person in my head is when I'm I'm the meanest, most terrible, like self-destructive person when I'm self-sabotaging up in here. When you it's are talking made to up. yourself. Yes. So no one else can hear it. And the way you feel affection is words of affirmation. So you know how to hurt yourself the most. Yep. It's just insane. It's insane. It's Once you hear that, you're like, Oh my God. And what's important is like, at least you're aware of that. And like, you're noticing these patterns because we can't go back in time. You can't unsay what you said to yourself, but like noticing these patterns, like there's still ways that you can kind of move forward from that, you know, completely. yeah, immediately I thought of eating, um, you know, people are rewarding themselves with food and booze. And, um, I think this is heavily based around image. Like there is something that's surface level about that, which is kind of sad, but like at the same time, you are wrapping a lot of your worth maybe in self body image and body image and how you feel about yourself. And then the fact that you're thinking of that. So, you know, in your priority list, it's going to cause you to obsession, upset. Yeah, obsession. there's an obsession around it. And I, I think we self-sabotage because we're our, of our insecurities taking over, like you're talking about. And I think when we don't think we're good enough and I think we do it when we're confused because when sometimes when we're down, our worst enemy is ourselves and we may bring ourselves down even further because we're already like, I'm already low. Like I might as well just go lower because, you know, I'm, in my head, it's like I might as well just give up. I mean, you're already lazy. Like you're already probably not doing enough. Like, and then this is where it starts to get twisted. It's like, Jordan probably doesn't like you as much as he did because you're not clearly not as motivated as you were when you got together. Oh, look at like, you're not, you don't lift as much as you used to look at you're losing muscle. It just is this, it's like a spiral of negativity. And all of a sudden I'm just sitting in silence like this. Yeah. And nobody has any idea what's going on. Yep. Terrible. It's horrible. I Why feel would that. I talk like that? Yeah. And it's, <sighs> It's crazy because our society is so used to like that instant gratification, which is why this binge eating one really like 
kind of like alarmed me and like made me think a little bit more because binge eating like short term, like it feels good. Like yeah. you're like, let me eat all this food. It's going to be a short term feeling. But like we have to raise our standards and know that like, how do you want to treat yourself and how do you want to feel mm-hmm. versus like the, the self-sabotage is like avoiding that pain so that eating in that moment. Yeah. You're going to not feel that pain. Yeah. But like long term, just like addiction, just like um, if you're drinking like short term. Yeah, you'll feel better. But we need to switch that and try to think of that long term feeling um, just like a little tips because I've dealt with that, too. So I get the worst self-sabotage behavior talk to after I've like done a night out. I feel like that's so relatable, but it's yeah. like that or maybe like it's the Sunday after the Saturday night out. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, you're a lazy. You know what? You are so lazy. And wow, you just like destroyed your body life. Last night, like you were just such a little shit. So like, it's like, who the hell are you? Like, I'm like in my own head. I'm like, huh? Like, I'm fine. I'm actually not that hungover. I'm having like a latte and actually picking my booty up and having my mixed greens yeah. and shit. I'm like, I'm fine. But it, it just attacks and, and it's, even it's hard next, to get out of. Even the next day, you don't have to be fine. Like, when I'm hungover, are you kidding me? I don't have greens. I want freaking McRiddle. I don't worry. I had greasy, five guys. Yeah. It was freaking Greasy phenomenal. ass food. Yeah. And that's okay. And it's it felt okay. dang good. And we're allowed to do that sometimes. I'd say the most important thing is to be mindful so, so that we can flip the mindset and stop, flip the mindset and stop the pattern from happening. Yeah. Uh, it's not as simple, but you have to realize when you're at your lows and take a moment to be like, I don't feel good right now. And then once you're out of it and having like a normal day, like today, and I'm going about my business and doing my things worked out with you at lunch and whatever. And like, I'm just doing my normal day and sitting there and being like, I felt horrible the other night for no reason. I was not lazy. I was not low. I was not doing horrible things. Jordan feel, doesn't feel any different about me pick your shit up and cheer yourself on be like, I'm not going to think that way anymore. This is BS. Yeah. And it will likely come back, but you got to fend it off before it takes over your brain. Yeah. And it's never impossible for you to change a habit, change your ways, turn things around because we want to live our best fucking life. I, I get it. I get it. We've I get all been it there. Too. Okay. So we talked about eating, yep. binge eating. What about like sabotaging relationships? Because yes. I definitely need to go to therapy. So here's a few <laughs> manipulation, uh-huh. overthinking, yep. drinking or keeping toxic people in my life. Mm. Whatever my love language is, I hurt myself in that way. If it's quality time that I isolate, Wait, these are all the relationship ones. When, whatever my love language is, I hurt myself in that way. If it's quality time that I isolate. Um, thinking that I have sounds to, like me sounds like both of us thinking I have to please other people. Um, this one says taking my anxiety out on my husband, distancing myself. These are all like, you know, people related ones. What I'm thinking of sabotaging relationships too is, um, it's that it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy almost where, mm-hmm. where you're like, I, like you're saying like, oh my gosh, like Jordan is like me because of this, because of this. And then you end up like becoming that. Or beca- acting on those acting things. on those things because you're like, oh, he can't love me because I'm this way. And you're the one who's telling your own truth. Uh, yep. And then you end up actually doing it. Yes. Like when you, for example, like oh, he doesn't even like me. I'm the jealous type anyway. You know, like I call about it out. I'm like too jealous about other girls and other. And then he comes in the room and he had liked some girl's photo on Instagram or something like that. And you're like, why'd you like her picture? <laughs> and you're just being nasty for no reason. And it's like, you're taking on that personality that you know that you're not. You just start obsessing over and talking toxic about yourself and you're self-sabotaging and to I- ruin something that you like. Why? I think that this also plays into attachment theories, which I yes. really want to have someone on to talk about that no, because we really, really should. Because the, the base of self sabotage is people that are avoidant. Oh, yeah. We're avoiding everything we can for short term pleasure and short term gratification. Like it, I want someone to come on and talk about that because we should have um, Yana's friend. Yeah. Who's in, she's in her getting her master's yep. in psychology or doctorate. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, I think she's getting her doctorate right now. I would love to have somebody talk about that because my, yeah. Oh God. Another oh. self-sabotage with relationship is that I've kind of dealt with too, is you're, you like someone, but then you start to kind of push them away because you can easily keep finding flaws. You keep finding flaws in people and you're getting the ick and you're dismissing people. Mm-hmm. And, um, it's, 
it's it's a vicious cycle. I do the self sabotage of like this is horrible to admit, but I, I said I'd be I know. candid on here. So well, that's the point. I mean, this like, is what it is. Yeah. Um, I do the like, well, you know, we're ser- we're in a serious relationship, but like. My a girl parents, like my can't parents, they sing it for mom. No, and then I'm like, do you know no, that's from? Yeah, oh, oh wait, because when a mom, boyfriend, and I break up, my uh, world is crushed and I'm all alone. The love bug comes, comes right back up and bites me, and I'm back. Can't okay. help it, girl. Can't, can't help, help it. it. Oh baby, can't help it. I know exactly I'm the sorry. Fergalicious. Or yeah. not Fergalicious. God, um, whatever. Fergie. A girl like me can't say single for long. <laughs> Except for boy, my boyfriend. Okay. Anyway, I still have a child. Sorry, we're a little ADD today. Um, but with like. I, I'm in a serious relationship, but then I'm like, well, my parents are divorced. My grandparents are divorced. Everybody like really in my life is divorced. Like, how could this one work out? Like, why would this one work out? You know what I mean? Like, all I've seen is relationships that don't work. This is a really or, good like, example because so many people listening probably also it's deal terribly, with this exact It's thought. terrible. But it's like, I see nothing wrong with my relationship at all. In fact, I'm enjoying being in it, but I'm like, maybe I shouldn't be in it. Maybe I, maybe I, should maybe just I like, shouldn't be enjoying it. Yeah, no, maybe I shouldn't enjoy it. Maybe it would be a better idea to just like end now or soon maybe because why would we last long term? I'm young. Everyone says, oh yeah, young relationships, you get a divorce. Like... It's like I absorb all these random comments and thoughts that people have said and I sabotage my own relationship and like get in an argument with Jordan for absolutely no reason whatsoever other than the fact that people around me are divorced. What? That is, We're not even married. We're not even engaged. We're not. That's not even on the freaking table yet. Like what? That is a really I'm so glad you brought that up because I know a, I, I've talked to like other girlfriends with the same issues and this not issues, excuse me, but the same thoughts. No, that's okay. in terms of like, yeah, like you that's all you know that's all you see and like what's there's no way in cha- there's no way in hell that it would work out but i have no examples it's just like it, but it's like what what an excuse you know mm-hmm. what i mean like but i am better than the, those relationships with this person and those relationships broke up because they needed to and why would i self sabotage what i have because of somebody else's past like why wouldn't i just learn from their mistakes and apply it to this relationship see how i just talked myself out of a hole yeah like that's the type of behavior you have to practice of like wait a minute hold on i'm like why am i talking so negatively to myself let's reverse how can i use it to my power that Mm -hmm. all the bad things that i've seen or whatever it is yeah i almost think even those negative thoughts i think we talked about this in i forget what episode but you write down those negative thoughts and you almost write the exact opposite down like a manifestation practice of some sort. Um, and I think a lot of this, I'm glad that you gave tips too, because yeah. we're like self self sabotage. We like, don't really know how to get out apart. of it. But yeah. I mean, we've all been there. But I also think being vulnerable with your partner about that, like, because vulnerability is scary. And that that is probably where a lot of you want to avoid being vulnerable because it might bring up pain. It might yeah. bring up that discomfort. But vulnerability also is love. Like, <laughs> yeah. So that's how Jordan and I connected because mm-hmm. I was honest about how I felt and I, how I have insecurities about those things. And honestly, that w- he completely understood. And he just listened. Yeah. And don't blame yourself. Just look for the patterns. You no. Know? Yeah, exactly. Got to catch the pattern. You know, you can't keep making excuses for yourself. That's one thing I will say is. I, I'm not using the divorce as an excuse ever again. Like me ruining a relationship because my parents are divorced. I, I'm sorry, but like f- 60 almost percent of people's parents are divorced yeah. right now. And our generation hopefully will be the one that slows that down and yeah. makes it smaller. But learn from people's mistakes instead of using it as your crutch as to why you did something. Love that. My opinion. Love that. My opinion. Just saying. I love that. Um, I feel like I had a few more that I wanted to read really quick. I'm just thinking of finances, like self-sabotaging oh, finances. Next one. I do that a lot. Spending money. Here it is right here. Someone wrote in spending mm-hmm. money and people pleasing. Um, Blowing money, comparing to others financially. Comparing to others, yeah. Um, it comes down to kind of your belief of what you're capable of achieving with money wise. Because, for example, um, I read this book called You're a Badass at Making Money. Oh, yeah. And I highly recommend it because if you think like you're like, um, you know, I'm I'm an entry level, like I'll probably make 50 a year. You're going to make 50 a year. If you literally think you're worth 100 and you know that's what you're going to make next year and you, you know, write it out, you budget, you figure out how you're going to make 100K, you have more than one stream of income, you think you're worth that 100K, like... I, I do think there is a little bit of manifestation there. I this is the most the truest thing you've probably ever said. I'm dead serious. Oh, yeah, I love you that. write down goals. Mm-hmm. Your goals will come true. Yeah. You don't write down your goals. You already lost. Like, I think it's like 
82% of like the likelihood of it mm-hmm. happening. If you write down your goals, you're literally 80 something percent closer to actually getting your goals to come true. I wrote down, I think 15 goals last year around this time and all 15 of them I've done. Love that. And then when I think you're lazy, you're this, you're that, the other thing, you're such a lazy girl. Like you haven't done, you know, you haven't been on your game and straight candid. You haven't been, you know what I mean? All these mm-hmm. negative thoughts. Look at my goals list. Yeah. I made progress on this one. I did this one. Like you Small have to write steps. shit down. You have to write shit down. And the goals don't have to be monstrous. Like literally one of my goals was to stretch every morning. Mm-hmm. Like think about things that would make you feel good and things you want to apply to your life and goals. Like, like you're saying, like, I want to make X amount of money by this year. And the, or by X the year. finance conversation is so interesting too, because the book, that book that I read, I remember talking about, I swear I burp every episode. <laughs> God damn. It reminds me of my dad. Mid, who he burps. I'm like this like mid sentence. Every time too, I start talking I'm like, fuck, I have to burp. I, I can't continue. Oh, I smelled um, it. No, you didn't. I think I did. No, I didn't even have anything to eat. Well, I smelled it. I smelled something. It smelled like a little grape or something. <laughs> that was well, black oh, cherry. Oh yeah, black cherry. Oh. Zevia's our fucking favorite. <laughs> um, but you are kind of a product of your parents. So like if your parents make a lot of money, you expect yourself to make that money. And that's why a lot of times it is kind of, yes, there's, pri- there is privilege. There's privilege. You're going to get handed down some shit. Like your parents yep. are probably going to help you out, but you emulate off of your parents. You're like, Oh, my parents make a lot of money. You like go to your boss. Like, yo, I make this. I need this much. I want to do this. Want to do that. I just feel like it does have to do with like what you see. If you come from not a lot of money, a lot of times people think, okay, well, my parents got by with this. I'll get by with this, but you need to know that you're capable of achieving way more than what you expect because yeah, and what you think you deserve because you do. I think you're going flipped too, though. If you, you know, you come up from you're not really having anything. That's at what all, I'm saying. And you don't, you that's want more. Why you need to read that. You book. work your ass off and you get there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can go anyway, but I, I completely agree. I will say I'm, I'm admittedly somebody who I've admitted this, like probably a few episodes ago. Like if I'm having a horrible day, I'll order a bunch of shit. <laughs> Yeah. And it's like Christmas and I go outside. I'm like, hi, Jeff. Oh my God. This is the so The Amazon nice. delivery man. Good to see you again. I knew the UPS guy in my old apartment because I'd be like, hey. He's like, hey. He's like, hey, Sid, what's like, up? I got 16 in the car for you. They got to bring another truck. I'm like, yeah, sorry about that. It's the way all I, shoes. The way I self-sabotage with, fi- good, with finances is I realize I'm like, oh, I have enough money to pay rent. I'm saving a little bit. Mm-hmm something happens where I, yeah. I probably order clothes. I probably go out to eat a lot. I definitely spend a lot of money on food. I All love of a sudden for a week, you're not worrying about it. Yeah. And then, and then I act like I don't check my bank account for a little bit. Oh, I do. You, know, you just, you oh. just avoid checking. Cause you know, you're doing something wrong, but you don't even want to look. Yes. And then reality check. You're like, fuck, now I got to save, 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 save. Oh, I feel good again. Let's blow it all. It's a pattern you have to break. Oh, it's so bad. I'm it's at the same such boat. A bad, I do this all the time and I'm fine. Oh my God. She dropped her laptop again. Jesus criminy. I will say we are going to have somebody on too. That is what, I, what happened. I just tried to drink the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh my God. Are you good? So you went, you're like, oops, wrong hand. I know. I, I looked over and you had it kind of near your mouth. I'm like, what? <laughs> I literally tipped it like, oh. <laughs> It's been Who a is long, this girl? It's been a long Who day. is this guy? Um, we are going to have somebody on though that's going to talk about finance in the least boring way. It's Callan. She came on with her um, now wife. Well, I almost said fiance. Callan um, came on with her wife now Hannah. Sophie's going to pull up the episode, and we're going to talk about finances and like what you need to know, what to not compare yourself to, how to ask for that raise, like how to be a boss ass bitch because Callan is the definition of a boss bitch and. She yeah. knows so much about like the basics of what we should have learned in school. Like just things that are exciting to talk about because it's your future. You know what I mean? And like, also not like stuffy, like put your money in stocks. Yeah. And like, also no. ways to make more money. Like yeah. I, my, the best advice was ever from Callan. She goes, I go, oh, yeah, I, I go, this. Callan, I go, oh, my mom's telling me I got a budget. Like I am broke. Like I, I do need money. She goes, you don't need a budget. You just need to make more money. I love that she said that. And I go, bitch. Oh, okay. That's what I should have told my mom. Yeah. That's what my mom should be telling yeah. me. But anyways, uh, Hannah, and Callan, Hannah and Callan are on episode 25. Um, one of our favorite episodes one of by our far. Favorite. Yeah, definitely one of our favorites. I'll never forget that. I though. never will. 
Um, and you can. That's the thing. People think you can't make more money, but there's always ways. There's yep. little things you can do. I want to take one more comment about self-sabotage. And it's talking yourself down. And if you're in a relationship or if you're maybe like seeing somebody casually and saying like, not being your independent self. That's something like I have an issue with too. I'll like lock myself in and be like, you're just doing whatever they want to do. You're just, you know, becoming that, you know, person, you're not being yourself. You're not putting yourself first now. Like be mindful and put yourself first. If you don't want to do something, don't say yes. Quit people pleasing, quit people pleasing the person that's sitting right across from you, because then they're going to get used to that pattern. Be you speak up for what you like. If you don't like something they've said, tell them like you're not less than all of a sudden, like you never were. And it's not going to be that way ever. So you better snap the fuck out of it right now. And if you're not, if you're listening right now and you're feeling less than in your relationship, rethink it and be that boss bitch that I know you are. Yes. Snap. I needed to hear that like three months ago. So a little oh, after, but sorry. Yeah. I mean, I, you hit home. You got to stand up for what you believe in because if you keep letting that shit pass, something just sits it's in your body and you're like, I don't feel right about this. And it's, yeah. If you're making excuses for what the other person is saying too, that's another thing. I, this is totally random, but I just thought of this. If you're making excuses for the behavior of the other person, then you're just as much at fault. That, and you got to get the hell out. That's the worst dealing. Do, do you know? I know. I've been in relationships before where... I, I do know that I do know what I'm looking for in a, in a relationship due yeah. to the fact that like when I'm in a social setting, you better be good on your own. Mm -hmm. And like, that's oh, like yeah, one of the yeah, top yeah. qualities I look for. Like, can he socialize? And I've been in a relationship where, yes, like I'm at a social gathering and I keep making excuses for them. Yep. And I feel like I'm sitting there with my butt cheeks clenched, like making sure that <laughs> they're being entertained. She's got a little taller. <laughs> making making sure that they're doing okay yeah. and that they can... And you guys doing okay over yeah. here? Mm -hmm. Did you meet my boyfriend? Yeah. Like, I don't want like to have to do that. No. I mean, depends yeah, on I'll the introduce person, yeah. But Yeah. But I get what you're saying. I hate that. I hate that. Don't... Ah, I know. We all have our needs. We all have our needs. That's all I'll say. All have our needs. Um... I have Shall a straight candid moment. Yeah, we have a listener straight candid moment. Yes. Let me pull it up. I hope I don't read this person's name this time. Okay. Straight candid moment. Keep sending these in, y'all. We need them. We love them. We love reading these. We will get to them eventually. If you haven't gotten a response from us, I'm sorry. We're slow. We're just working our way through. <laughs> to be honest, we've probably read them, but we just haven't responded yet. <laughs> it's just hard. It's yeah. hard to respond. You're like, ha <laughs> ha. I'm like, that's not enough of a response. Okay, here we go. Straight in a moment. I really like this guy. We've been seeing each other for two-ish months and we've been consistently going on dates like wine and dine type of dates and also good sex. I can definitely see a future with him and can tell he feels the same. Well, at least I thought when we were on the same page. Fast forward to this weekend. Long story short, he took me to Billy Sushi for another wine and dine night and had convos and we laughed and our usual dynamic. All of a sudden, I can tell he's going to ask me to be his girlfriend. And he does. He knows we were too serious to be casual but also wants to continue to have sex with other people oh. like full-on <laughs> asks me will you be my girlfriend but can we be sexually open question mark okay I'm so like, yeah open relationship yes for sure you can't promise it can we be girlfriend but can i have sex with can other i people? be sexually open okay Kay. we're on a date i'm caught off guard don't really know what to say besides yes because i like him so much but i'm not really the girl to be open to things like this should i be anyways holy curveball we were dating but i just don't feel the same and haven't expressed those feelings to him yet do i tell do I say hell yeah and embrace this open relationship or do I end it because I just know he's not, oh my God, he's not all in on just me. Just when you think you know a guy. Okay. By the way, she's writing this, honey, you would have issues with, um, you would have issues with the open relationship. Um, because he would take advantage of it and you wouldn't. Well, I honestly think if you're doing an open relationship, this I, is so I think I think the I think the girl has to be the one to kind of present it. Really? Yeah. I think if uh, the fact that he goes, we be my this is so hard. Will you be my girlfriend? But can I like? 
can we be can I, like, sexually can open? I, like, fuck with other girls? She goes, yes. <laughs> yes. Wait, what? I know. That's what I'd probably be my response to. I'd be like, yeah, I'll be your girlfriend. Huh? What I did really, you just say? I will say I do like the idea of an open relationship with boundaries, especially when we're young. I get it. But if she's the one that's already feels a little off about it, you have to be already kind of in the mindset like, I would love to be an open relationship before you meet a person. I think it takes two types of mindsets that are the same to come together yeah. and have that. And she's not that mindset. She's not that mindset. And to be honest, I'm not that mindset. So I relate with like her response and being like, whoa, wait, what? Like, hold on. Now I don't feel normal. Now I'm not like very secure. I understand why people are in open relationships. In fact, I met someone recently that was in an open relationship and it sounded really good in the forefront. And then later on, I learned more about it. And sometimes there's hidden demons inside of that open relationship reasoning. If you're both not on the same page or didn't come into it with that intention, but I'm not knocking them at all. I like I'm that. not knocking yeah. them at all. Yeah, no, I think they can work if you get two people with the same mindset coming together. But if you don't have those same mindset, one person is going to get hurt and one person is going to get their way. I also think it depends what... <sighs> It's so what hard. Age you, what age you are, yeah. really, because I think an open relationship could work if maybe you're starting dating someone. It's the beginning of a relationship. You want to have some fun. You still want to like explore other things with boundaries. Obviously, there needs to be a ton of communication with open relationships. The issue is people that age that I think could could do open relationships suck at communication. Well, I'm thinking like college. You're like, you know what I mean? Like maybe you're dating some long distance or something like that. I don't, I don't know. I'm not saying that that would work. That's but a then, great idea. I but would then so, yeah. that age, they're the, I'm sorry, but your brain is still maturing. You're the least likely to be communicating. You're I partying and you know, like at school you're busy. Like I would not trust a college boy in an open relationship though. You know, what is there to trust though after you it's like in he an gets open his relationship? Cake, he gets his cake and can eat it too then. But isn't that what an open relationship is? Yeah. I guess you're right. Right? Kind of. But I want my cake to eat it too, you know? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You need two mindsets that yeah. are the same in that match. Yeah. Otherwise. I think you, what are your I've intentions? never tried it. Like, I'd probably get jealous, to be honest. I don't know. It would not work for me. It would not well, work for me. And the whole... Oh, I don't... I would not work for me. I'm telling you right now. I would yeah. not. I'm, it, and... I think I've got a bad taste in my mouth because the ones that I've heard of it from that person in it, I'm trying not to give as too de- much detail. So, because I, I just want to respect their privacy because yeah. it's not like something that old people openly know. Mm-hmm. But there's um there's a reason they did it because they didn't start that way. Okay, and they somebody lost feelings. And wasn't sure what they wanted. Oh, I see. And then that person okay. was like, "Well, f you. I'm gonna go do what I want." Yeah. The one person came crawling back, and then now they're in an open relationship. I see. Because that's what is going to work now. Because it's almost like a well, you ran away, so I got to do what I see. want. Do you get what I'm saying? How, yeah. It depends how it's the built. intentions and how it's built. Yeah. Like also, why wouldn't you just date then? Like for example, if I'm seeing someone now, yeah. I'm still seeing other people because we're not we don't put a label on it. No. So if if you want to be in a relationship. I think you're in a relationship. It's yep. exclusive. You put a label on it. Yeah. Like this is obviously my preference. I think it could work and I would love to have someone on talk about open relationship, how they make too. it work. I would but love for to. me, like if there's a label, I think that's when I would want to be exclusive. But right now, like let's say I'm seeing someone, maybe I am, maybe I'm not. I don't know. Um, I'm still going to date other people until then. And that's technically an open relationship. So why not just keep it like that? And then when you want to put a label, on yeah. It. Interesting. I mean, why not? Right? That's it's what people, the same, I think that's what it's people the same do. thing. It's cuffing season, but not no label. But is it because you're not sold completely on yeah. somebody or is it because it's because you want to I, see what else is out there? I want to see, what else, see but yeah. do you see how that's like Both. kind of countering like a relationship? Do you yeah. know what I'm kind of saying? It's self-sabotage. It's kind of, right? But I will say that. But not always. I will say that I just haven't met the person. Correct. Like when I know, I'll know. I and there, there it is. And it's it's like I'm going to obviously not date one person until... I meet that person. Yeah. And I, I get, haven't. And you haven't. So mm-hmm. then you're still going to look. Yeah. I get that though. That makes sense to me. I think that we need to get somebody on that is in yeah. one because I want to hear it from the other side. And I think that they do work depending on who you are and how you want to do it. But yeah, I, I can't, I can't relate with it. I'd be like, did you just look at that girl? Yeah. I'm going to kill you and I'm going to kill her too. Yeah. <laughs> and I'd like grab their shoulder. I was not like, prepped. Breathe, breathe, breathe. <laughs> I was not prepped for this topic. So it was just kind of like, you're like word vomit. No, that's okay. Um, 
That was really good. Please continue to be. <laughs> sorry, that was really good to to wrap it up. Please continue to be vulnerable and send things in. Like seriously, we love answering questions. We love giving our point of view. Remember, we're not experts, but we love the hell out of everybody who's willing to be vulnerable. And we'll always keep your privacy. Don't worry. Um, hashtag straight can a moment or hashtag straight can advice. Please, when you send it, we're working on getting something easier so you don't have to type out the DM. Maybe we call. We, we'll see. Hoodies drop this week, so be mindful of those. Also, be mindful of getting those for Christmas. Get them under the tree, you guys. We got larges and extra larges coming and XXLs. And if you are Minneapolis based, stay tuned. We're going to have an event happening in December to raise money for Best Christmas Ever, which we just started. Which, um, do you want to talk a little bit more about sure. that for a second? Sure. Um, Best Christmas Ever is a foundation that we we paired with last year and we did with the Back Pocket Boys and we picked a family, raised money through, you know, different fundraisers and different things like that. And then 100% of the proceeds go to the family and we have a sponsor that tells us what the family needs. And then we give those gifts and money and whatever it is that they needed to that family. And this year we have a family of six two adults and four children who have special needs and they are in dire need of a new housing situation. They're all living six of them in a hotel room and because they're struggling with rent needs and they need help. And we're going to raise money, raise money and we're going to throw this bomb ass event um, at Gray's in Minneapolis. If you're local, watch out for tickets somewhere. There'll be much more to come. And, and you do not the, yeah. have to be Minneapolis based to donate. No, Just, not you know. at all. We've got a link in our bio. We'll We'll continue to post it on our on our story. But um, please, please, if you even can give two dollars like those dollars make a difference. And I'm not begging you. I'm just I'm asking if you if you're willing and able, please do it. It's not only cuffing season, but it's giving season. It's giving season. And um, this family would really appreciate it. We would appreciate the help. So please check out that link in bio. Even even anything you have, 10 bucks, just send it that way. Um, We would would love it. 100% goes to them. um, And 100% of the proceeds from the event will go to the family. We're trying to raise, I think, 20,000. Yeah. Um, Holy crap. I think we can do do this. I know we can, but it's like, let's do this thing. It's an amazing experience for that family. So thank you guys. Giving last year was like, Oh my Nothing God. you've yeah. I will so never you, forget not, it. You can't even put it into words, uh-uh. but it just it show, puts a lot of things into perspective. To be honest, too. So anyway, um, follow us at Candid Sid at Candid Soph. You know what to do at Straight Candid Podcast. Hit us up. Send us your shit. Um, uh, Jordy, thanks for being here. I saw Jordy, and then Jordan just walked by at the same time. I thought you were calling him Jordy, so I was like, "Hi, babe. <laughs> Hi, sweetie. Hi, Jordan. Hi, sweetie. Um, we love you guys. Thanks for being here. Hope you did." amazing thanksgiving and uh let's do this saying happy thursday happy thursday bye guys see you next week see ya bye 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 i kept trying to not eat i know this was was so good oh no i know i ate all the chocolate out of it (laughs) are you kidding there's a bunch of peanuts in here i know all the bullshit stuff's left yay